2011 Chevy Malibu. Went into a ditch, needs a new radiator. The uh, AC is most likely no good anymore. Probably got some crackage in there. We got a radiator down here. Took the cover off, 10 millimeter bolts with a couple of plastic hold downs. Comes right off. You can kind of look down there. I'm gonna be taking these off because they got bent. A little 10 millimeter there, you can get in with a wrench or a small ratchet. Let me take those apart and then we'll get on to the rest of it. All right, step by step here, guys. Took the engine cover off, here it is right here. A little flat head there. And then you got a little hose right there. There's your hose with your clamp. Just use some basic pliers for that. I opted to take with the upper radiator hose off from the engine, that's why I took that cover off. Get yourself some big old jaws and get this clamp pushed back. This was seized on there pretty good. Had to start spinning the hose, broke it free, then it came off. So it's just so hard to get to that clamp down there. When you reinstall it, have the clamp facing up towards you so you can get some long pliers on it. You know, like some long needle nose like those right over there. All right, we disconnected the fan's wiring harness. You got one on this side, right here. You just pull back on this tab and push it off. There's also a retainer right here that goes into the fan shroud. One on each side. Get those disconnected. I got my upper radiator support guide brackets out so I can bend them back straight. He said just get it back together and make it run without overheating. I said all right. Now we're going to lift it up in the air and get this uh, fan assembly taken out. Should be bolted in at the bottom with like two bolts. And then right here on the sides has these little tabs that just slide into the radiator. But let's get it lifted in the air now. Here we go, we're up in the air. You can see there's this bracket right here. And that's where our radiator sits. It's a little bushing. If you come over to this side, that bracket is gone. It is on the floor, all mangled up. So we're missing one support bracket. See. It just sheared right off of its welds here on the engine cradle. That sucks. All right, so I opened the drain. This is the drain for your radiator right here. You don't have to take it all the way out. Just opens up, lets it drain. There's a plastic cover right here. Held on with some plastic clips and uh, I think seven millimeter bolt right there. This is busted up. Another chunk right there. But you get the point, take your plastic cover off. All right, you can also unhook your uh, radiator fans from down here. Now we got two transmission lines to take off. One's up there, the other one is right here. And I'll show you those. Let's grab a screwdriver. See this transmission line that goes up, the upper line is kind of getting in our way for taking the fans out. So there's this black cover right here and it just slides backwards. There we go. Now there's a little retaining clip right in there. I know you can't see very well on the camera. Use a pick to get it out. I'll show you later on what that clip looks like and how to take it out and put it back in. But let's get our transmission lines out of there, lower and upper. I'll get a little oil bucket underneath here to catch whatever drips down on the floor. And I lied to you. I don't think there's any bolts in this fan shroud this fan it's just all just locks in with taps so you can push it straight up to get it off the radiator all right here's our upper one i got the bottom one off i like to use a pick like this with a pointed tip and we get right in the edge of that clip right, and get it to start moving they usually come out pretty easily sometimes they're seized in there the lines are or the clips are spray them down with some blaster or whatever this one does not want to move like it's jammed in there just moved a little bit but they just pop right off if you start from a tail from the from the end the bottom one came off i should film the bottom one that came off really easy maybe we'll try a little flathead screwdriver to get in on this one i usually use the pick though uh, here's a little flathead that's skinnier. And then your lines, 
you can start turning your lines and they pull right out. But if they're seized in there, a lot of corrosion, you're gonna wanna use uh, some blaster and get them seized up. All right, this one is giving me trouble. I'll stop filming it. I'll show you on the new radiator. Got the lower radiator hose off from this side. Just using some pliers. It's a little bit of a pain. You get to get your arm in there funny and squeeze the pliers, but then you can pull it back. You can get two hands in there. Not too horrible. Not like the passenger side. Now, with that all out of the way, you need to have one of the hoses disconnected to get this uh, fan assembly out. So we're just gonna pull this fan assembly out. go do a little finagling it'll come out of there all right and now we have our radiator to take out one small problem the radiator is bolted to the AC so uh, yeah let's get that unbolted Here we go, we got our 10 millimeter bolt here on this side. And if you look up in there, there's just a tab that it pops out of. So you just gotta take this bolt off this side, this bolt off this side, get everything nice and wiggly jiggly. Uh, get it out of its support brackets. Oh, my bumper just fell down. It was split anyways. Get it nice and wiggly jiggly and you can get to it. So you don't have to unbolt this guy. So, yep, let's get those two bolts out. All right, it kind of like rehooked itself to the AC here. And these two big tabs on the top of the radiator were holding me up. And then there's this wiring harness here. You got your two front impact sensors and uh, you just unhook your wiring. Now let's see if it'll come out of it. We got it. There we go. We're gonna take that uh, radiator hose off. Now that it's out, I won't transfer it over yet. We got our brand new clippy clips in here. See these C clips? Come on camera, focus. Those are the clips I was telling you about. And uh, I like to take my pick. They don't always come with these clips. I like to take my pick and get uh, the tail of them. But this one's loose enough. Focus camera, Jesus. You can get up in there and pull them out. God, it's hard to do with one hand. All right. Come on, stop making me look stupid, car. You can get up underneath of them and pop them out. Those little clips. Radiators don't always come with new clips, so make sure you don't lose your old ones when you're popping them out. They'll go flying on you. But we can just pop these guys right back in their place because your uh, transmission line will just pop right through there and pop in there. See, we got a new seal inside there. All right. Let's take this guy, put it in that guy. All right, guys, let's get everything buttoned back up. Um, yo, that had to go. It's bent, it's warped like this. So it won't fit in there. It's not straight no more, it's cracked. It doesn't matter, it's a junk part. It does kind of protect the radiator from rocks, seeing how we don't got a bumper. But he said, make it run. We'll worry about the bumper and the AC working in the future. And I was like, okay, I'll make it run, right? All right, so. Slide your radiator in, and then slide your fan shroud in. Lock them together, all right? They're locked together. I put my trans lines back on, they just snap right in with those clips already pre-installed. Put your trans lines in, put your radiator hose on, clamp in. 
So it sits down into the radiator support bracket with those little rubber bushings. I got some new ones for that. Um, and then you can fit this little guy on. I know it's tight quarters, but you can get your hand in there. Turn it with a wrench and that locks it in at the top. So it's locked in at the top and the bottom. Put my wiring back on, put our ground wires back on. Disconnect your battery before you take those ground wires off. Always a good idea. Uh, what else do we got here, fellas? New radiator hose back on. Much easier to get to with the spring facing this way or upwards. Just make sure it's not in the way of that. Hoses are back on. Fill it up with coolant. We still got to put the engine cover back on before we start it up. And, um, yeah. Plugged everything back in. Put everything back in its places. There's that little clip. Uh, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. So these are all damaged pieces. They're not going back in. But if it's your vehicle, put your covers back on up underneath. Make sure your fan assembly is locked in place. Um, we'll put our cover back on, those 10 millimeter bolts and those plastic retainer pins. And uh, we're gonna start it up with coolant in it and let it get up to temperature and then turn the heat on, make sure heat's coming out. Get all the air out of the system, bring it all the way up to temperature, shut it off, and then uh, let it cool completely down. Top up the coolant again if it needs it. Let it get up to temp again, take it for a drive, bring it back, let it cool all the way down, check the uh, coolant level again. Just kind of cycles the air out of the system. Uh, try to keep track of how much tranny fluid you lost. This, it was only a few dribbles. You might have to add a little bit, check your trans fluid afterwards. Um, if I forgot anything, I forgot anything, but basically that's how the job's done. All right, and that drain valve right there was a little loose on the brand new radiator. Make sure that's tight before you start pouring coolant in. That's about all the notes I have for you. And uh, take care, y'all.